Hello to everyone who's watching, and thank you for inviting me to be part of your virtual celebration. For those of you who don't know me, I'm writer and Disney historian Jim Fanning, and you may know me from my videos on my YouTube channel, which is Told You Would TV. And in those videos, I share some artifacts from my own collection and do that as a way to talk about some Disney history. I do have some Disneyland artifacts, which will help us take a look at Main Street USA and how Marceline influenced that famous thoroughfare. You can see it right here on this map. Behind me, this is one of the very famous fun maps that were created over the years to help us take a look at Disneyland. And it's kind of fun because while Disney called Main Street USA the heartline of America, and you can definitely see here that it is the heartline of Disneyland, Walt wanted Main Street USA to be the one thing that guests had to experience before they went dashing off to the other realms of Disneyland. Because Marceline, which of course, as we said, inspired Main Street USA, was such an important part of who Walt was and his imagination and creativity. So he wanted the guests to have a taste of that as their sort of introduction to Disneyland. Now, what I have here in my hand is an issue of the Disney World magazine. This issue is from late 1968. This magazine would become Disney News, so you may know it better uh, by that title. But at any rate, uh, here we have the famous Walt Disney stamp on the cover. This first-class United States postage stamp honored Walt Disney who had, of course, died in 1966. As many of you know, Marceline was host to the first day of issue for the stamp in September of 1968. For those of you who are interested in stamp collecting and the importance of stamps, you know that that is a really big deal. A plaque was installed at the post office honoring that occasion. And since then, the Marceline Post Office was named in Walt Disney's honor. So just another part of Marceline history intersecting with Disney history. I have some of these pictorial souvenirs that have been published over the years, and I thought we would take a look back, get kind of nostalgic over something that's nostalgic in the first place. And this is the second uh, souvenir book that was produced. Here's Walt, of course, showing off the uh, wonderful Peter Ellenshaw map that was created when Disneyland was still being constructed. And that's a wonderful cover image. But as I was saying, this is the second one that was created. The first was put together before many of the attractions were even available to be photographed because they hadn't been built yet that first souvenir booklet had to be ready for opening day. So mostly concept art, but that's why the whole thing about picture souvenir book of Disneyland and natural color is so emphasized because this is a big deal that you could see Disneyland in color photographs. And then after you visited the park, you take this home and wow your neighbors. So of course we have the very important Main Street train station inspired by the depot in Marceline. And of course, that building is where the Walt Disney Hometown Museum is now housed. So we're all familiar with that. We have this first image of Main Street, emphasizing its importance. And another great view. Just think, 1955. I'm hoping you can see this very easily. Um, the trees have certainly grown much larger over the years. And uh, it's interesting that Main Street really is the least changed of the realms in Disneyland. The shops inside the buildings had changed in some cases. There's no longer the old fashioned pharmacy with the leeches that you could visit if you were ready for some bloodletting, but the buildings themselves have not changed that much. Looking back at this first page again, we have City Hall, and then there's a closer view here, one of the most charming and important buildings on Main Street, 
And City Hall really reminds us that Marceline is not the only inspiration for Main Street USA. That's always important to keep in mind because other influences are drawn upon too. So designer and Imagineer Harper Goff, his hometown was Fort Collins in Colorado. So certainly the um, uh, City Hall building was inspired by the City Hall, the actual City Hall of Fort Collins. Some wonderful early photography. Charming details. And now we move on to the third pictorial souvenir, a complete guide to the realms of the Magic Kingdom. And again, we start, of course, with Main Street. Here's an example of a new format that was uh, first published in 1960. This was actually bought in 1961. And you know who's on the cover, and it's now Walt Disney's Guide to Disneyland. And this was important because this format, more or less, was used for many years afterwards because the idea was is that Walt Disney himself was going to introduce you to the realms of Disneyland, including Main Street USA. So here we have a welcome from Walt Disney. And then for each of the realms, we have a photograph of Walt Disney sort of experiencing one of the attractions or some aspect. Here, of course, he is on his beloved train, the Disneyland Railroad. And again, beautiful photography. One of the shops that unfortunately is no longer there, but was there for decades, is the candle shop. And here you can see there are candles on sale. And candle making using wax, of course, was demonstrated. So wouldn't that have been fun to experience? Some of you may remember uh, visiting there. I believe it was there through the 70s. But again, all kinds of wonderful photography. Here we have a wonderful glimpse of the ice cream parlor. Uh, it's still there. Uh, in other words, an ice cream shop. But they took out the beautiful, intricate uh, woodwork and the ice cream bar where you could sit at, at the counter and have a sundae and sit at these beautiful little tables. Unfortunately, that's gone, and that is too bad because that was a real throwback, wasn't it, uh, to another earlier era. And for this new format, Walt Disney's words introduce you to each realm. Here are his thoughts and insights into Main Street USA. Now, sometimes, of course, people will point out, well, Walt had never actually said this. And that's true, but he definitely had input into this. Whoever wrote it, it might have been Marty Sklar. But whoever actually wrote it, it was definitely approved by Walt. There's no question about that. In 1965, we had what is the best of these pictorial souvenirs in terms of size and quality and uh, just amazing content. Uh, this was published the year of Disneyland's Tencennial, and it's really as deluxe as you can get. Again, a word from Walt. And again, his welcoming words to the specific realm, our beloved Main Street. And again, photography. The Main Street Cinema reflecting the movie theater, Marceline. Uh, another thing that's changed uh, starting in the 80s is that Main Street Cinema stopped showing silent movies uh, which were more period appropriate. And I think that's a real shame. It's always fun to see Mickey Mouse cartoons, of course, which is what is shown there now. But how fun and more of an experience, more, more of a taste of nostalgia to see actual silent films in the cinema. So that's too bad. It's kind of hard to see, but here on the marquee, the movie playing was Pathways of Life, starring the great silent star, Lillian Gish. The design of this pictorial souvenir album is really incredible because the, the conceit is that these are all old-fashioned frames with uh, the photos in them. And it reflects the nostalgia of Main Street. And of course, we see that there have been some additions. 
Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln is now playing in the Main Street Opera House. One thing these pictorial souvenirs do is really emphasize the various realms of Disneyland. And that's especially important in the case of Main Street USA because Fantasyland, say, or Frontierland don't need a lot of selling uh, or a lot of explaining even, but Main Street USA can be so overlooked, uh, that's not where the e-ticket attractions are. You know, Space Mountain is in Tomorrowland, Big Thunder Railroad is in Frontierland. So sometimes people overlook something like Main Street USA, and that means that they don't have a chance to realize how important it was. Walt Disney, of course, moved to Marceline with his family, obviously, when he was five in 1906 and he and his family lived there until 1911 so this is the very era that Disneyland's Main Street USA is supposed to be portraying so some people may feel that they don't know about Marceline but if they know of Walt Disney and they know Disneyland then they know Marceline even if they don't know they know because that small town was so important to Walt. And there's some reflection of that in really everything he did because it formed him into the person that he became. So I had mentioned uh, Walt's words uh, that introduces Main Street USA. So I'd like to take just a minute and read a few of them. Many of us fondly remember our small hometown and its friendly way of life at the turn of the century. To me, this era represents an important part of our nation's heritage. On Main Street USA, we have endeavored to recapture those bygone years. Here is America in 1890 through 1910, at the crossroads of an era. Here the gas lamp is giving way to the electric lamp, and a newcomer, the sputtering horseless carriage, has challenged old Dobbin to the streetcar right away. America was in transition. The discoveries of the late 19th century were changing our way of life. When you visit the ice cream parlor, the market house, and cinema where silent films play, we hope you will visualize, as I often do, your own hometown Main Street, or the one your parents and grandparents have told you about. Main Street is everyone's hometown, the heartline of America.